Welcome to What's on Tap. Hi, I'm Sarah Bozich. This month, we catch up with State Representative Patty Kim at Little Amps in Midtown Harrisburg to talk about how she arrived in the city and why she loves it so much. Can you tell me about your family history and how you ended up in Harrisburg? Uh, my parents uh, are both from Korea, and they moved to California and met there. So I was born in California um, in the 70s. No details on what year. <laughs> um, then we moved to D.C., outside of Virginia, and that's where I spent most of my high school years there. Academics were a blur, but I was really good at lacrosse. I played sports. Nice. Um, and then decided to go to school in Boston. Uh, Boston College has a great nursing program, uh, which I almost flunked out of. <laughs> and um, the nursing professors like Patty, there's life after nursing content. So, I was like, I just wasted daddy's money um, for three years. Why did you years. want to be a nurse? I am addicted to helping people. And I thought that would be the Pretty ideal situation. To, have. <laughs> to help people, but uh, I don't know, changing sheets, talking to cranky, sick people. <laughs> not really my thing. So um, I looked for a really kind of like an easier curriculum. So I picked communications. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I want to be a news reporter. That's what I want to be. And. Um, pursued news reporting, um, and I, I, I ended up in Harrisburg because of the news station. They have a great market sites here, um, but I, I get nervous on camera. I, I, I guess I chose this, the, the field, because I was a middle child and like I like attention. <laughs> I don't, no, I'm kidding. I do like the journalism part. I like the writing part, but I think really, sure. I just, you know, but I would get nervous for every live shot, and it was just not a good way to go to work, you know? Yeah. I had to go to the bathroom like four or five times before a live shot, and um, so I, once I had my baby, I was like, you know, I, maybe this is not for me, let me readjust, and then I got into politics. I never thought that I would be here in Harrisburg for 13 years and to raise a family here. And I remember my second day um, in Harrisburg as a reporter. Um, it was one of my most embarrassing moments. I had a huge blooper um, on the news where uh, in Hagerstown, we didn't have a lot of equipment. So it was, you know, back to you. And then after I say back to you, the anchor comes up. But here in Harrisburg, they have a two shot where you see the anchor and the reporter at the same time. <laughs> so I stumbled my way through my live shot and I said, back to you. And then I thought it was off air. And the anchor, two shot now, anchor says, Patty, we want to welcome you to the team. <laughs> and I get my notebook, I'm like, ah, oh, oh, screwed up. Can't believe that. Patty, you're still on air. <laughs> You know, I told you I used to work in the communication shop at the House of Representatives too, so I know that we saw a lot of people that would make the transition yeah. from the local news to behind the scenes, or a lot of people go to, you know, PR agencies, and uh, why do you think that is? The news and politics are very, very similar. Um, in both fields, you're living in a glass bowl. You know, you're a public figure all the time. And um, my, the best skills that I learned for politics is on the anchor desk. You know, you gotta sit there poised, mm -hmm. There could be a light that crashes down, but you're still talking <laughs> with an anchor smile. And in some of these crazy like council meetings that I were in, you know, someone will say something really obnoxious and you're just like, okay. You're right, that is a skill for sure. <laughs> just don't react, stay professional. Um, and so that, that has worked. Um, the, the transition was very easy uh, for me, I thought. Why well, move from city council to the state house? I mean, certainly that's a much, you know, broader constituency and a lot more work. Even the city council was so hard. I mean, I think I got in the worst period ever when things just started to fall apart. But I learned so much and I realized how much I love to work uh, with my constituents. Mm -hmm. I love getting things done collaboratively, efficiently. You know, in government, people are always complaining that things don't go well and it takes so much time. But I just, I found my niche. And what I loved also was to attract good people who want to help. Um, so I just felt that it would be a natural progression to go to the state house, to have a larger district. And I did have problems with the way the state 
the state was mm -hmm. um, governing, um, you know, wanting to put in some reform, trying to find ways to save money, transparency, put my stuff out, you know, on my website, my expenses online, just to try to change the, the uh, culture in the state. And um, so far, so good. What do you think the importance is of arts and culture, particularly to this community, which has its struggles? My goal is to obviously get the city back on its um, financial standing and, and do well. But I would love two parts, um, to have Harrisburg University do well. I want it to continue to raise enrollment and kind of make this not only the state capital, but a college town. And for college towns, they usually have a good number of people coming in and helping the economy. Um, so we'll have youth, and then we'll have things for college students and young folks to do, and which is, I think, is the arts and music, which I think is a great draw. And I think they'll have synergy just because it just, they're both attracted to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm excited for the Susquehanna Art Museum, and I know that that could be an anchor to already what is going on in Harrisburg. Um, it, it can really transform us and, and be a destination point if we attract the right folks and the right talent. And so I'm very excited that once we get over this hump, and especially this economy, we can really focus on the fun things, you know, mm -hmm. and not all this dire situation with the incinerator and cultivate a, an arts culture that's fun, that's safe in the city and vibrant, and that's one of my goals. So can you tell me about um, the effect that campaigning has on your family? I got into politics when my first child was about eight months, and then my second child, I, I had them um, during council. So they don't know anything really else other than me being in um, politics. Um, and thankfully, my husband is so supportive, and um, he gets it. And it's funny, the more work that I do, the harder work that I do, the more he appreciates it. So like after being gone all Saturday, door knocking for my campaign, he'll have dinner and wine. Aww. Honey, I'm so glad you worked hard. I'm like, no complaint that he has to do the laundry and take care of the kids. So oh, I am it's wonderful. So, I know, I am so grateful for that. And um, I remember I was, again, door knocking on a weekend and John um, sends me a, a picture of the kids. The, the yard signs are taller than my son, you know, putting them together for me so that I didn't have to Aww. do that. And so just oh, crying on the side. <laughs> they love me and support Aww. me. So it makes it a lot easier. Tell me what it's like to raise a young family in this city. I live on Second Street, <laughs> and when like rush hour, when all the state workers want to go home, mm -hmm. walking on my sidewalk, it's like, kids, get out of the street, <laughs> stay on the sidewalk. There's a little bit of stress there, but I love that my kids see just a diverse group of people, that they're not all one ethnic group, but just, but, you know, from rich to poor to different ethnic groups, I, I want to expose them to what the world is really like, and so um, it's, it's interesting, I mean, when my child was, when my daughter was maybe six months old, um, I had her strapped on one of those, you know, Bjorn things, and yeah. I helped at a homeless, you know, shelter um, for giving out food and stuff, and you know, her bright eyes are like, where, where am I, and people are like poking at her, and stuff. good, I'm mean, not poke at her, I don't want them to poke at my child, but just be exposed to all types of people, because mm -hmm. I think they'll be more well-rounded that way. What is your theory on using social media? I think a lot of criticism for past elected officials, politicians, is like, what are you doing? You know, what have you done for me, what not? And so now we have this tool, this free tool called social media, where I can let people know what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. Um, if there's a business that needs help, I can help promote. It's just a great tool to use. Um, it doesn't reach everybody, um, but it reaches the active folks where I can to have constant communication with. Um, and there was something that I thought of while I was um, driving on a beautiful day. I had the sunroof open and I, would pa I passed a synagogue and I saw this cute kid, probably 15, because it was his bar mitzvah, cheesing it up in front of the synagogue <laughs> with these photographers. And I'm like, that is so cool that I could see that, you know, down the street from me. And then I saw a painter painting the Susquehanna River, you know, and just on a beautiful day. And I'm like, you know what? 
there's so much negativity on the news and outside folks, you know, in the suburbs, you know, see Harrisburg as a murder capital, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just, I want the residents who we choose to live here to remind ourselves and to encourage our community why we're here. Because we know, we know why, what it is, but sometimes we get just bogged down by the, the news headlines and whatnot. So I started a hashtag that says um, how I see HBG, how I see Harrisburg. And I wanted people, whatever reminds you of why you love the city, because I know you do, write it down. And I get, I get these pictures, you know, somebody on the uh, kayaking on the river or seeing a beautiful sunset or having friends in the neighborhood. And it's just, it's, it's a bit of feel good, but it just reminds us why we're here. And we, those folks need to stick together and, and wait for this time to pass because it will pass the, the, the down period that we have right now. And when it's all done, we're just, you know, we'll be stronger, a stronger community and even prouder of, of Harrisburg. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. A little cheers to Harrisburg. <laughs>